with my test. I'm Josh and this is Chad Capper. Hi. This is the founder and designer of the Knuckle Hub, now soon to be built as an H quad. Well, and today we're going to talk about the Knuckle H quad. The Knuckle H quad. Which is the, the Knuckle Hub kit yes. or assembly. We're selling this right here. It's just this, these little pieces of wood. Yeah. And it consists of a top plate, a bottom plate, which are perfectly symmetrical. They're both the same. Okay. And then the 90 degree uh, plates. So um, there's a lot of stuff you really can't get wrong. And your hope is that there's gonna be a lot of different frames coming from this. Josh already took and modified it and made a uh, T-copter out of it. Need some more tweaking um, though. What I like though is the fact that you've given us the tools to basically make any frame. If you have a need, we can make a need. And hopefully between the anti-copter hubs, the knuckles now, mm -hmm. you'll be able to do that. Well, I think what people start to see, we're, we're making kind of Legos for multi-copters. Yeah. So inexpensive erector set yeah. type pieces. Now, if you guys haven't seen the, uh, the review of this, go ahead and check it out. It's a fun video. But let's get started in the meantime. When you pop all these out, what it's going to leave you with are the two plates, and I'm just saving time here. Okay, because um, yeah, I ramble on. Yeah. <laughs> so you have all these pieces, and you notice these extra little pieces here are not really needed. Yeah. Um, but you can use them for a couple of things. If you do decide you want to do something with a T-copter later and you need to butt up two pieces together, you can use those to connect those. They also um, work as a good template. The first thing you want to do is um, mark your arms. And this is important to make sure you do it right because I've built about six of these just during testing and I've already had to throw away about three arms. So mark your arms. Yeah, mark your arms. And, and you also have something really important with uh, your drill. We tried to make this... Um, Go large. Yeah, we tried to make it easy because, you know, I cannot drill a straight hole to save my life. Yeah, unless you have a drill press, mm -hmm. it's really challenging. I can't even do it with the drill press. Yeah. To tell you the truth, what I do is I actually glued my gussets down, and then uh -huh. I went to the drill press with my whole built H quad, and then just drilled through them all, and then slapped the back plates on. Now, don't do not do that. Yeah, because when you break it, you're cracking all your plates. Yeah, don't don't glue these. If I knew that, I would have stopped him. Yeah. These are 10 inch by half inch. Roughly 10 inch. It's actually mm -hmm. like 10 and an eighth. Okay, so, and I think they all might, hold on, depending on the batch, let's see here. Yeah. They're all pretty good. <laughs> oh, good. That one's they're, well. they're slightly off. I'm going to mark 10 inches exactly here. And then I'm going to go back and clean these up real quick. You can see how that's jagged. Now, while Chad was cutting the horribly cut booms, um, I should say the horribly cut, miscut. Miscut's a better way to say it. One nice thing about this design is with the straights at the ends, if you're physically off a little bit and say you're cutting these at home, you don't have to worry about it too much because you can physically move these in and out to get the extra dimensions right on. Like Josh probably told you, um, you don't have to make all of these perfect. I just, yeah. because we have a chop saw back there. You know what, anytime you can use a chop saw, it's awesome. Exactly. So we have our four wood booms here. Right. And all 10 inches, hopefully. If yes, not making they're, 10 inches. We all, we made them all 10 inches. So what we're gonna do is, Find the center, which is five inches in. Okay, and then we'll measure from the other side. It's a nice, neat little trick to make sure we're we're centered. And it's off just a hair, but now we know the very exact center. Okay, then we're gonna line all these up, and it really doesn't matter if this is off, you know, half a millimeter. It's not gonna hurt yeah. anyone. Your whole goal is actually make this so you can kind of build it dirty, huh? Right. Nice. There's our You're center halfway point. Done through all four of them. Yeah, cool. halfway there. Uh, this okay. awesome center hub actually acts as a guide too. Why don't you show them how that works? Yep. Okay, so, um, and it's good to lay this out before you start drilling and marking things just so you don't mess things up. This is how it's gonna go together, just so you guys can start to visualize. Um, so what we need to do is we need to mark these holes here, these inner holes, and we're going to use this as a template to do that. And how we're going to do that is we take those off and we put that line, so you can see it right in the center of that hole, line up the edge, hold it tight, and mark only the outside holes here. Okay? The reason is, is these are going to mount like this. So then we can take our little straight pieces as a template, put the first hole there, and mark the second hole. Oh, hold it tight. So now you got that one marked. Just make sure you go towards the outer tip of the wood, not towards the center. Right, because you want it to be wider 
than that plate because these knuckles will go like that. And the knuckles actually don't point in, they point outwards. That's correct. Yep. Yeah, you get a little more strength that way. All right, so now we're gonna do the other side. If you want, you can put this under here to just help support it. And I'm gonna mark the outside holes. So the end pieces are almost marked for drilling. Okay, the end pieces are done. So we're gonna use the straight motor mount to mark these. And I just, I usually pull that out till it hits the edge of your side plate. So you can put these together ahead of time. I'm not gonna show these in this video because we already have a step-by-step -step guide online um, and you can put your straight mounts together. I'm just gonna put that on there. All right, just get all these marked. Make sure if you're gonna be building these things, have a, have a good drill. All right, so that one's marked. And now this is gonna be the side and this mounts like so. You want the wider width this way. All right, so on this, we just need to mark the center of the plate, which is the whole thing is 80 millimeters um, wide this way. So we just need to go in four centimeters or 40 millimeters. We're gonna put that on that center point. And again, just the corners. We added extra holes in case you guys wanted to get creative and, and mount things or reinforce things but uh zip ties we're, we're just tie pass right through it yeah it's it's perfect for a small zip tie um so if you want to mount something over there or use it to reinforce something that's fine um so that's that's all you do there and then the ends are real easy you can just take these little pieces here square it up to the end both sides and that will be for the knuckles right there. So just do all four ends like that. Okay, so now yep. all of our holes are marked. Now so if you have a drill press, you probably recommend the drill press over anything. Absolutely, if yep. you have a drill press, it's use it. best to use the drill press. And don't be afraid to use, an one eighth uh, drill bit is gonna be a three millimeter hole. Okay. Um, I like to go a little bit bigger. What is it, 9 64 Nine sixty-four. I think yes. is the next size up. So Mr. Bixler here has a nice little trick where you can put it down, get a scrap piece of wood. Yeah. And as you go through, just let the weight of the drill work for you. Another great benefit to this too is it doesn't leave any really gross splinters on the other. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. So I think you said it though. Let the weight of the drill work for you. If yeah. you're pushing, your drill bit's too solid or you're too impatient. Yeah, I'm usually too impatient. It's okay. Um, but that's if you're doing it um, with a hand drill. Yeah. Um, we always recommend using a drill press. Drill presses are good. Worth yeah. every penny too. Once all your holes are drilled. Now you have your, your booms are ready to go. This is where the fun really starts. Yes. All right, so you're gonna lay it out like so. And- What do you prefer to start with? I like to just get everything in okay. with the, the screws and the nuts on, but I don't tighten anything down. So cool. what you do is get everything started. Just, I usually start with one of the, the knuckles and I just put, the um, the nut on finger tight, right there. I don't I don't lock it down yet. So I usually just get these started. All right. Oh, the other thing you can do, why Josh is putting that together, this is the little Allen key that comes with the kit. I cut it off and put it in your drill and use it as a bit. Say you, so what's uh, happening? You're putting that together. There's and a I... misaligned hole. Maybe we got a little too eager during oh, the build video. Maybe you drilled that one. Maybe I drilled that one. No, I'm certain it was me. So it nice. so it's off. I'm, I'm just gonna um, use my bigger drill bit. Do we have our wood, our scrap piece of wood? And I'm just gonna loosen it up a bit. And the whole point is basically to throw this together. You don't have to stress too much. No, and, and There's not be gentle thing. with it though. Don't, don't just, um, you know, ram the drill through it. These are uh, 20 millimeter screws. Yeah, 20 millimeter button head screws. Um, and it's because the wood that we use on this is a little thinner. But don't think it's weak. No, it's definitely not. We've run into trees, we've run into each other, we've run into the ground. We had the Swede test it. Yeah, and uh, we've tossed it around the, the backyard. Yeah, and uh, they- My favorite was your battery test. Well, yeah, and I don't think, 
I don't think these have broken once. I don't think they yet. And we I actually, when I glued, when I glued the guts, when you glued them, them yeah, that's yeah. why you do not want to glue them. Now uh, we have gotten these to break on a pretty hard crash, but they're if you'll notice, we cut them so the grain is going this way. The ones that broke actually had the grains running this way, and the battery strap pulled it apart. Now we just have all the screws and the nuts. They're finger loose and you'll see everything moves. But this gives you the opportunity to start squaring things up. But really all I do is here put this so it's on the lowest torque setting. Um, you can just start tightening them down and it's pretty amazing it starts to straighten itself out. You don't have to over tighten them because at some point you'll start to probably crack the wood yeah um, we'll compress it at least and these are these are lock nuts that we provide with the kit so you don't need to um, go crazy with it the first one I built I did I put a lot of energy into trying to make sure it was square it didn't matter they just it always seems to end up square what the original intent was designed was just to have fun with yeah this is a it's like a little backpack quad yeah and i just wanted something that you go bash around with fix very easily and we bashed them around once again if you haven't seen the review video check out the review video we really yeah we, we stress tested it whether we intended it or not we stress tested it. okay so all i did was tighten them all down yet look how look how straight it is that way is it square yep pretty amazing isn't it Looks good. i don't know how it works it just does Okay, so there's your basic frame. Nice. So now the only thing you have left um, with the wood portion here is the uh, top and bottom plate. Now what I'll do is go ahead and just put those in to make sure you got everything drilled straight. All right. Just the four corners. And then what I like to do is I like to take my speed controllers and mount them in here and then solder the wires together and keep it really nice and clean. Nice. Um, just because that way you can keep it nice and neat. But if you don't want to do that, if you just want to use yeah. um, plug-in adapters or whatever, to you can you can mount your speed controllers on the arms. And, and if this is your first multi-rotor, if you guys are wondering how to hook this up, we have a lot of videos we'll link below that shows you all electronic hookups on different multi-rotor projects we've had. Go ahead and watch those. You'll get a lot of education on how to get these things hooked up. So but we're only going to show you how to build the frame here. This is what it looks like. David uh, built his with the uh, speed controllers just mounted out here with zip ties. And, uh, you know, so that's that's one way you can do it. The other thing, uh, well, you can paint these. It's yeah. wood, so you can paint it. I personally like flat black. David likes flat black and obnoxiously bright orange. So have fun with them. There's a lot you can do with them. Nice. So for now, um, we're just going to go ahead and put all the plates together. The, the very last step uh, for the frame, the airframe itself, is just um, adding the straight mounts. So there's the, the basic wood frame. Now all we need to do is we get our four landing gear mounts, motor mounts. And there's included hardware. These are 25 millimeter screws. Right, and it's all included and we have a separate walkthrough on the website to put these together. Now, one thing to pay attention to is you can mount these with the motor mount up or you can mount it lower and switch this tab. Yes. I generally like to put them up because Those if- Props getting too close actually causes a vibration. Right, we found that out that if you, uh, the countersink your yes. motor or bring your motor lower what happens is you bring your prop closer to the uh, the surface here mm -hmm. and you can actually start to get some vibration because of that what's that called that it's like an air pocket kind of yeah it creates a little Resonance air pocket almost, when yeah. the when the prop comes around so this is the straight mount so yeah. we're just going to assume you put all these together using the other uh, tutorial on our website yeah. and, and that'll be linked below too right so on these um you just add the 25 millimeter screws in here. And this is where it's really nice to use this little um, uh, box driver. Yeah. If you don't have it, you can actually pop out the sides, but it'll only more tighten it because then it's really hard to get those side cheeks on, right? That's true. Yeah, I, I like to put them on assembled. Yes. They just, it's faster, it's easier. Um, all right, there we go. Last so screw. Now we have all of our pieces together and if you're building the h quad you are going to have four of these left over that's fine just save them. that's just your straight Future pieces projects. you can use them for templates or whatever yes so that's the knuckle h quad very cool what do you think did you have fun flying them i, I loved it actually i had fun flying all of them and the h quad was a, a long time ago it was about a year and a half old design you brought this back and truly did it justice because uh the whole thing was supposed to be rugged lots of uh, real estate on it 
and you did just that. Well, and what we did was we wanted to uh, build around these same kinds of motors, the, yep. the Blue Wonder and, and you know, the 370 size. Eight inch props, things like that. Right, so it's an eight inch prop, Blue Wonder. You can even go up to nine, or you you built yours with a 10 inch prop. 947s, yeah. Oh, is that what it was? I went down to 947. And uh, this is Alex's. He, yep. um, he actually built his to fly this way, so it's a true H quad. Yeah. Where he calls ours an I, I quad. This one's David's, where you can mount the uh, uh, the camera mount mm -hmm. on it that he designed. All the bolt patterns line up. You may want to build it different if you want your camera to project forward. Just keep in mind that if you do that, you're going to need a counterbalance with your battery. Right. So you may be putting your battery not on the actual camera you tray itself. still need your CG in the middle. CG is important. That is important. So, uh, yeah. So I hope you guys have fun building these and I hope uh, you get a lot of a lot of joy out of flying yeah. them. So I guess we can close. Build, uh, build them, crash them, make some memories, do it again. Yep. We're, we're not flying these, but we'll go ahead and close with a montage from the other other video. Very cool. Oh yeah, and, and these are officially at the store right now. Yes. So if you haven't, if you're not going to custom build them, we will also have free patterns too. Right. So you can uh, download the patterns, cut them on your own laser cutter if you like. Yeah. Um, but we want to make it accessible to everyone. Yep. So. so. All right. Well, thank you. And thanks for your help today. Enjoy Josh. the montage. All right. We'll see you later. Yeah, I got it. All so right, you we, ready to fly it? Yeah, we always finish off our uh, episodes with a test flight. Yeah. This should be no different, right? Chad took off, so yeah. we had to fill in. All right, so let's okay. go ahead and see how it so, do. Yeah, I'm ready. so arm it. All right, it's armed. Nice. Pretty good. Good flight. Good, good flight. flight. Yeah. Take off landing. Thanks let's do that. it again. <laughs>